Clip Studio can automatically colorize your artwork, so let's see how bad this is. All right, there we go. That's not horrible. Hello, my name is Brad and I love art and design software, but I don't talk much about software unless it's a big new update or if it's something new that I haven't really used before. I never talk about the software I use the most, the software that I love and I really want to. So I decided to start a new series here on this channel where I talk about why I love the software that I do. What better place to start this series than Clip Studio Paint? So here we go. 10 things I love about Clip Studio Paint. It is designed for comics and manga. At first glance, Clip Studio looks and feels a lot like Photoshop. You got your palettes and your settings and your layers and your colors and the tools over here on the one side, drop down menus. But what makes it fundamentally different is that it was created specifically for sequential art. That's a fancy way of saying comics. In fact, the original name for Clip Studio Paint was called Manga Studio. Photoshop, on the other hand, was made for editing photos. Now, of course, over time, Photoshop has grown into an app that can be used for dozens of dozens of different things. Whereas Clip Studio has maintained a hyper focus on only things that illustrators need. So instead of, say, brushes just being another tool you can use, Clip Studio packs so much more into that one little feature. For example, Clip Studio has a comic frame making tool. Actually, let's make that number two. Number two, we have the frame making tool. You're gonna find this icon right here on the left hand side. Making a comic book panel or frame is just like drawing a shape. I can just come over to my canvas, draw out the frame, and when I let go, there it is. Over on the right hand side, it has created a new layer for my frame. Gonna talk about that in a minute, but I have a nice rectangle here. What if I want a shape that's not a rectangle? Well, check this out over on the left hand side. We have our tool settings. Right now it's set to rectangular frame, but if I'd like, I can grab polygon frame and I can come over here and I could hand draw in another frame if I wanted to go that route. Now you're gonna notice most of my canvas here is purple. That just means that my frame is active, which means when I'm drawing in it, it's gonna act almost like a mask and nothing that I draw is gonna go outside of that frame. But that's not even the coolest part of the frame tool. Let's check out our settings in that left-hand corner again. Where it says create frame, we can go to the second part where it says cut frame border. And what this is gonna let us do is divide our frame in the panels. So when I come over here, I could just come in and I could drag a line and wherever I let go, I have now divided that frame up into panels. If I hold the shift key while I do that, it's gonna create a perfectly straight frame. And then I could continue to subdivide it as I go. And there are a ton of settings for this. So I can change the width of space between the gutters. I can change the width of the stroke of the lines, or I could remove the lines around the edges of the frames entirely. So that's the frame tool. Pretty cool. Number three are reference layers. This is actually a feature I learned about in Procreate and I raved about it. And a bunch of commenters were like, dude, Clip Studio has had this for like 400 years, give or take. What is a reference layer? You draw your line art like I have here, and then you can paint it in with the paint bucket tool. But what if you want your colors and your line work on separate layers? That's where reference layers comes in. It references your line art, but you're actually painting on a different layer. Nice, right? So I have my paint bucket tool over here on the left hand side, and I'm gonna make sure in the settings that it is set to refer to other layers. Over here in my layers, on my top layer where my line art is, I'm gonna click this little icon here, and that is gonna set that as a reference layer. On the layer below it is where I'm going to add my paint. Now, when I use the paint bucket tool to fill things in, it's going to fill in with no problem. Super simple, paint on its own layer, I love it. But there's more here. For example, you see that not all of my lines are closed, so sometimes when I tap on something, it fills in way too much. That's not what I wanted. Let me undo that and go over here to the left hand side to my settings again. Over here I have this close gap option and if I turn that up, then when I go here to paint in my tree, it closes in those gaps for me. Now, of course I have to do, I do have to come in here. I do have to uh, tap a few times, but the paint bucket tool makes that easy as well. I'm gonna grab a different color and say I want to color in each one of these little slats that I have over here on this monument thing. Well, if I just hold down my mouse key and I drag, I can fill in all of those at once. Then I could grab a slightly darker color, go into the other side, 
and do that again. I want to color on this fence, no problem. Click and drag. Super duper uber simple. I like coloring in other apps too, but I have to say Clip Studio is light years ahead when you start to dive in to all of the settings they have on its coloring tools. Which brings us to number four, the crazy coloring tool. Let me turn off my colors. I'm gonna select my line art and then we're gonna to go to edit and then down here to colorize technology preview. Now what this is going to do is it's going to use computer AI to go out on the internet and try to figure out what color my image is going to be. And I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't do the greatest job for my art. I've seen it work wonders on other people's art. Uh, maybe because mine isn't like other people's. I don't know, but let's go ahead and process this and see what it turns up. All right, there we go. That's not horrible. I think we can do better. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to turn on my color layer that we were using before. I have added more colors than I had because I think that's going to make this easier. Now this time we're gonna go up to edit. We're gonna go to colorize technology. And the second thing we're gonna use is use hint image and colorize. This is going to use the layer that we have selected which is our color layer. And it's gonna use that as a hint to try to figure out what the color should be. So it's not just guessing at random, but it's using some of the colors that you laid down pretty quickly. Let's go ahead and colorize this. Yes, okay, let's do it. It's gonna process and boom. And as you can see, it did a pretty interesting job. It's added some interesting gradients here and there. Some of the things that I didn't color, like the character, still look pretty awful. But many of the things that I did colorize seem to blend colors pretty well. I love what it's done with the stonework over here on the left hand side. That colorize tool is so cool and I haven't seen anything like it in any other program. While you're here, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. You know Skillshare, it's the online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators, where you can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Have you been to Skillshare lately? Have you seen all the classes they have over there? There are hundreds of art and illustration classes covering everything from cartooning, hand lettering to procreate to animation, even classes on Clip Studio Paint. They have classes by Jazza. Jazza, people! I took his character design class. It is excellent. He goes over design fundamentals, brainstorming your character, sketching it, refining, testing out your characters. It's just great. Skillshare is curated content that's all about learning and it's ad free. New premium classes are added all the time and an annual subscription costs less than $10 a month. When you join, you can try one of Skillshare's new live classes and experience real-time inspiration as you connect with popular teachers while watching and working along other members. The first 1,000 subscribers to click on the link down below in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Thanks for sponsoring this video, Skillshare. So what is number five? Multi-platform. Clip Studio is truly multi-platform. There are a lot of apps that work the same on a Mac or a PC. That's cool, but when you get to Android or an iPad, they tend to strip a lot of features out, or they simplify the app, or they just make a completely different app and name it the same thing as their desktop version. What's impressive about Clip Studio is that it's a straight up port of the desktop experience. So if you like using Clip Studio on the desktop, you're gonna feel right at home on an Android tablet or an iPad. Which brings us to number six. It's super customizable. On Windows or on a Mac, this isn't a super big deal because Photoshop is super customizable. But once you get onto Android or an iPad, it's a big hairy deal. On Android, there's just absolutely nothing anywhere that's near as flexible as Clip Studio. On the iPad, some apps do get closer, but Clip Studio still wins. You can sync up a Bluetooth keyboard. You can keep a really, truly pro-level drawing app and take it with you anywhere and literally do anything that you could do on the desktop. Number seven is 3D objects. I'm gonna go over to the side and I'm gonna open up my materials panel. There is a ton of stuff here and you can go online and download a lot more resources for everything far beyond just 3d models but I'm gonna focus on the 3d so I'm gonna go down right now and just grab one of these characters and drag them to the stage and look at that we have a character and what's cool about this is it's totally 3d so I can use this as a reference for whatever I want to do if I want to 
turn the character a little bit to see how it's gonna look that way, I could do that. I could zoom in, I could zoom out. Now what's really neat is you can grab a body part, like say the hand, and I could move the hand up, and, and then I could come in here and I could rotate a little bit bring that hand in. Actually, I wanted to move the whole arm. I'm gonna rotate that arm. Maybe that character is reaching up for his sword or something like that. But you get the idea. You can jump in. You can play with all of these things and have an amazing reference for your character that you can put at pretty much any angle within your perspective grid and use it as the perfect reference. Next up is Clip Studio can do vectors. Now this isn't as robust as say Adobe Illustrator. In fact, it performs nothing like Adobe Illustrator, but Clip Studio has found a way to take the best parts of vector art and put them in what looks like a traditional raster program. So to start, let me go over to my layer palette and I'm going to create a special vector layer by clicking on this icon right here. Now I can take any tool, pen or pencil, and I can come in here and I could draw my lines and I'm gonna to totally overshoot these on purpose, don't worry. I am a trained professional because I want to show you one of my favorite features in here about vector lines is I'm going to go to the eraser tool and then I'm gonna make sure that this option, vector, is selected here. And now when I take my eraser and I scrub over one of those lines, it just erases it, at least the excess of that line. And if I tap and drag, I can do multiple lines at once. It's really handy. And there's so many other little vector things like patterns and things like that that are packed in here that you can play with that are completely flexible. In fact, if you want to, you can still come in here and select an object and move it around like you would a traditional vector piece. But a lot of this complexity is hidden in the program, but it's still keeping a lot of power of vector art. Number nine, Clip Studio Paint is a full-blown animation program. Actually, I shouldn't say full blown, but there are a lot of animation features in here. In fact, I've made an entire video about it. Because of that, I'm not gonna dive too deep, but there is this drop down menu here called animation. I'm not gonna start at that drop down. I'm gonna start at the window drop down, and I'm gonna go down here to timeline, and that is gonna turn on my timeline down here. And from here, I can make a new timeline and it's gonna bring up some options here. Now, something that's important to know is there are two versions of Clip Studio Paint. There is Pro, which is the low-end version, and EX, which is the high-end version. It seems like that should be reversed, but, but here we are. And one of the major differences between the two is that the Pro version, the low-end version, you're limited to 24 frames of animation. If you're doing 12 frames uh, a minute, that'll give you a like, or 12 frames a second, that'll give you like two seconds of animation. Number 10 is perspective grids. I'm gonna start by going to the ruler tool over here on my sidebar. When I click on that, I'm gonna go over to my ruler settings and I'm gonna make sure that I am on perspective ruler. And then I can come over here to my canvas and I can just pick a place where I wanna put down my first line and then maybe pick a place where I wanna put down my second line and that is gonna set up my vanishing point. If I wanted to, I could keep going, but I don't want to. What I wanna do is just show you that as you are drawing, you can come in here and uh, lay down as many lines as you want and they are going to form to that grid and the perspective that you've put down for yourself. If you have followed along to any of my perspective classes on my second channel, which is all about learning how to draw, you know that this can be really time consuming if you're doing it by hand. Yet if you have an application like Clip Studio to help you out with your perspective grids, it speeds it way up. So that is Clip Studio Paint, one of my favorite drawing apps. There are others I use too, of course. Should I talk about them? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.